What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. It's time to talk about World of Warcraft Shadowlands and CPUs. Since uh, we have here the Zen 3 that I'm going to compare with the 10th generation Intels and some other Zen 2 and Zen Plus. So, this video is about to give you some information if you are planning to prepare a build for the next expansion, so World of Warcraft Shadowlands. In this video you are going to see a CPU comparison between AMD and Intel with a memory profile that I try to make as even as possible. Everything was set on manual to 3600 MHz C16 with tight subtimings. Then I'm going to show you the memory scaling for the Zen 3 CPUs with different memory kit and different memory EC. So you understand how the memory impact the performance of the game and eventually what memory kit uh, is best to buy. And then I'm going to show you the overclocked result for AMD and for Intel. And then you can decide if it's worth the effort to overclock your CPU to gain some extra performance. Then I'm going to show you some real gameplay made with the best Intel configuration and the best AMD configuration in the pre-patch area in the Ice Crown, so you will see how those CPU reacts with a super crowded environment like the rare boss fight. So you will see 40, 50 or even more players in the same zone that is very very taxing for the CPU and you will see the worst case scenario possible. And then later on when uh, I have uh, my future testing C GPU that I hope you that is big Navi and that I'm hoping to acquire one, I will start to do, as always, the ride, the dungeon and everything in a complete version. So, without any further ado, let's get straight to the point and let me show you the numbers. Looking at this chart, it's pretty clear that the Zen 3 are a step ahead even at the flagship, the i9-10900K. And what is really impressive is the leap in performance over the past generation. Look at the 3800X and uh, even at the 2700X, we are talking about uh, from 27 to almost 50% increase and it's really stunning. Another thing that impressed me is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 that uh, now can be considered a budget uh, CPU for gaming and is very close uh, to the i5-10400 but the 10400 in this position is made with the 3600 MHz memory and to do that you need a proper motherboard or as you can see in the second last spot of the chart the performance have roughly a 50% decrease. If you have noticed I put in this chart the RAM latency since it's something that must be taken into consideration since it's not a clear indicator of the performance. And that came our next uh, chart. Now, in the red line, we have uh, the amount of L3 cache in megabytes. So you will see that uh, the Ryzen 5600X and 5800X have 32 megabytes and the 5950X have 64. But why is not uh, at the first position? Since uh, this CPU have a higher boost clock. But it's simple, because the 5800X and the 5600X is a mono CCD configuration, so we have only one block of cores and that reduces the intercore latency, something that is far more important than the memory latency. But let's talk about uh, cache again, since uh, for the AMD Zen 3 is very important, since uh, the main issue in the previous generation was uh, a very high latency and that was uh, a bad thing for gaming but now with a lot of cache the higher IPC the intercore latency that has been reduced and some other architectural improvements the memory configuration is not that important because everything is worked on a cache level on the other end for Intel that we have uh, less cache than AMD Memory is still very important for the overall performance and on top of that the 10900K have a higher boost clock. So for Intel we have to watch for the CPU frequency and the memory frequency and latency when we talk about performance, at least for 144Hz gaming. And that is a thing that you have to keep in mind if you are going to make a build with an Intel non-K, so like the i5-10400 
at least uh, to find a good motherboard that can allow you to overclock the memory if you're going of course to use a 144S display or more. So we just talked about cache and it's time to talk about memory since uh, memory uh, timings and configuration and tuning still matters less than Zen 2 but enough uh, to dedicate a chart about this. The CPU I used uh, for this test is uh, named the Ryzen 7 5800X since it's the best one that I tried and uh, uh, as you can see I have tried almost any combination possible. First thing that came to my eyes is that if you leave your memory at XMP, no matter what is a Micron E uh, or a Team Group Extreme at C14 3600MHz, that is a very nice kit uh, using Samsung B die and selected B die, the results are pretty much limited uh, and around 145 FPS. So it's always good to tune the memory and uh, to do a manual tuning of all the timings. As you can see now, it is pretty clear that it's not the XMP profile with a certain set of timing that usually are four or five timings, but it's very important to tune everything. Another thing is that uh, four sticks helps a bit, not much, and honestly, if you have already 16 gigabyte or 32, it's not worth uh, to buy another kit uh, to have a, a couple of FPS more. But if you have already a uh, four stick memory kit, well, is good for you. If you look at the first position, is something that uh, is a bit weird since uh, everything that you see here that is not specified like the team group or the Micron E was made with a Trident Z 400 MHz, so a very nice kit and by the way this is one that I use for extreme overclocking so it's a very very fast chip uh, capable of almost 5 GHz C14. But uh, I tried another kit to verify the result and I found out that uh, even from a stick of BDI to another stick of BDI, there's a difference, probably for the internal latency of a slightly different uh, uh, chip. So it may happen that uh, with different uh, models of kit, you have different results, even with the same chip. It's no big deal, but it was something a bit weird that uh, I wanted to report. Now, if you look at the bottom of the chart, I tried as well the 4000 MHz 1.1, uh, one, one. so we are talking about 2000 FCLK. Uh, in this case, uh, is a good result for 2 stick, but not so good result for 4 stick. And that is probably because I'm using a beta BIOS and the overall system is not uh, capable of handling at that frequency for stick of memory. Maybe the result is going to change with the new BIOS, we don't know, but so far, 3800 MHz is the sweet spot. Needless to say, avoid one stick configuration of very low speed memory, since uh, you can lose uh, up to 20-25% or more. And now overclocking. If you want uh, the best of the best, uh, the king is still the i9-10900K, but in this case is a very nice chip with a very lucky silicon and a very expensive memory and then again you have to tune that memory and make sure the system is stable and everything so it takes a lot of work to be able to have an average of 160 fps that same average uh, i achieved with the, the ryzen 7 5800x overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz and the best possible configuration from the memory but to do that i used extreme uh, overclocking cooling so uh, it's not a real case scenario but uh, I was messing with liquid nitrogen, so I had uh, the time to run that test. I tried as well to play a bit with the precision boost overdrive and the offset, but it seems that even if we reached uh, a frequency of 5 GHz and 50 MHz, it doesn't really help, so memory tuning is again the way to gain performance. But what is clear is that uh, with the new Ryzen, you don't need to overclock the CPU to have a very nice results, and you just need to tune a bit the memory. And I think it's a good point to take in consideration since uh, not everybody can look for a golden sample for the Intel CPU and uh, spend money on a very expensive BDI memory kit uh, and turn it to 4600 MHz C17. If you look at the big picture, it's clear that uh, if you have uh, a Zen Plus or even a Zen 1, uh, it might be a good choice to upgrade uh, to the newest Ryzen. 
if you have a 10 generation Intel, well, I think uh, it's safe to say that you can play very nice with that platform and you don't need to go from Team Blue to Team Red, but that is up to you. Uh, I'm here to show you all the numbers without any bias, since uh, I like to play on both. And you know, when you are playing and you are having fun, it's not 10 or 15 or 20 FPS that can change your experience. And take uh, into consideration that uh, this zone, when I did the benchmark, so the Gryphon run across Bastion, is one of the toughest zones for your CPU. So it's the worst case scenario if you are doing uh, leveling or quest. If you are in another zone or in the old zone, you will probably see like 200 FPS instead of 150. Later on, I will try as well the ride, of course, and uh, I think the proportion will be more or less the same, uh, but I think the new ride will be more GPU bound. So we will see probably a smaller difference between the CPUs. And talking about big rides, it's time to show you some gameplay in a really tough environment, so with a lot of player casting spell and do stuff all together. This gameplay is made uh, with the Intel Core i9-10900K, heavily overclocked uh, with a heavily memory tuning. As you can see we have 96 FPS on average dropping, since uh, there's a lot of player doing stuff here, and with a 1% low of around 60. This is a Ryzen 7 5800X uh, with memory tuned to 3800MHz, and uh, same here, we are going down to 96, uh, 94 FPS on average with 56 1% uh, lows. So we are talking about more or less the same performance. It seems that uh, the Intel is giving a bit more, but we have a situation here that is different than before. So to have a proper benchmark comparison, we have to wait my right benchmark results that uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Alright guys, let's summarize a bit. We have the new Zen 3 that are without any doubt amazing CPU, capable of topping out the chart without uh, need of tweaking or uh, expensive memory kits uh, to be at that level of performance, especially with the Ryzen 5 uh, 5600X uh, that uh, is a good entry point to this uh, new architecture. And uh, well, we have the Intel that the 10th generation over the 9th generation is performing well too, since now we have a very high 1% lows, so no stutterings or frame drops. So you can choose both, Team Blue, Team Red, and at the end of the day you will have a very nice build. As for the memory, what I suggest to you is to take a look of this. Crucial Ballistic. Uh, even the, the kit of 3200MHz can be brought to 3800MHz uh, to top out the performance of the new Ryzen, but even with Intel they are performing quite well, so you don't need uh, anymore to go for the top of the line memory kit with a very exotic uh, chip inside to be able to have a very high performance. That kit is pretty nice, sometimes it's very very cheap and uh, well, is very easily tuned both in Ryzen and in Intel. Now, if you're wondering what is the best uh, GPU to run WoW Shadowlands, well, it's something that is going to take a bit of time, since, as you may know, the new Nvidia are pretty hard to find, and something tells me that even Big Navi is not going to be an easy task at day one. But uh, you know as well that I'm trying to do my best uh, to give you the result as soon as possible. And for that, I want to thank you all my Patreons, since uh, you are helping a lot, as this channel is still independent and they are not giving me any review samples, so everything is brought by my own. And well, again, thank you. Uh, as always, if you want to get in contact with me, I suggest you to contact me via Discord or leave me a comment down below. I hope that I give you a lot of information to base your purchase decision and well, subscribe, share this video if you like it, talk with your friend and see you in the next one.